Here are seven small boa species for those of you who love boas, but don't have the space to have one of those giant boas. Let's get right into number seven on this list, Kenyan sand boas. Kenyan sand boas are probably the smallest species on this list because the males only get to 20 inches and the females grow larger, so they get to about 30 inches. They're a very docile species and they rarely bite. I have seen them strike at people, but it's like, they're so tiny and it's so cute the way they strike, it's just, they're of zero threat to humanity. I really like the morphs of these animals because they look like tiny cows, at least the exanthic ones. And if you're into fall colors, then the normal type Kenyan sand boa is very beautiful as well. It's an orange and black kind of color, or you can get a mixture of colors and get paradoxes. I mean, it gets crazy into it, but for the most part, the morphs that come with these Kenyan sand boas are absolutely beautiful. And they're not that pricey either. You can get a normal Kenyan sand boa for about 40 bucks at a reptile expo. Just don't go to a chain pet store if you're gonna look for a reptile because they're usually a huge markup. I've seen normal ball pythons go for like $100 at a chain pet store. So go to a reptile expo or a store that is primarily a reptile store. But they're an awesome species nonetheless. Let's move on to number six, rosy boas. Now, rosy boas, I, I think, are some of the most unique boas in this world because not only are they small and very beautiful snakes, but they're also from North America. They can also be found in most parts of Mexico, but the rosy boa is one of the only boa species that lives in North America. They only get anywhere from 17 to 36 inches, so about two to three feet on average, and they're some of the most nicest snakes that you can ever get. They rival ball pythons in how docile they can be. I've seen people pick them up in the wild and they won't even strike them. They can also ball up when threatened. So if you like ball pythons, but you want a boa, get a rosy boa. I would say that in terms of morphs and color patterns and everything, they're very similar to the Kenyan sand boas where there's only a couple different morphs, but those morphs are very similar that you'll have a black and white one, there'll be an orange and grayish one, but you can also have uh, have what's called, I think, a strawberry or something, but they're like white and red, and that is awesome. I would love to have a red colored resi, resi, red colored rosy boa. And like most boas, this is a live bearing species. So if you want to breed one of these reptiles, you don't need an incubator they'll incubate the eggs inside and they'll come out as live young. Number five on the list is the hog island boa. I used to own a hog island boa and I think that they're some of the most amazing species ever. These are a subspecies of the BCI boa, which I'll get to later in the video, but this subspecies is from an island off the coast of Guyana. And because they've been confined to a small area of land, and because they don't have a lot of predators or competitors on their island, they really started to adapt to that kind of lifestyle. So they're more of a dwarf species of boa and they only get to about five to six feet compared to the regular BCC boas, which get to, I mean, like seven to 10 feet. They're somewhat docile. I mean, they can strike you, but as long as you tame them down, I think they make excellent pets. You can find them at reptile expos all the time. I've always seen one at most reptile expos that I've gone to. Speaking of BCI boas, they're number four on the list, and this is more of a generalization. There's a lot of boas. I mean, it's BCI is boa constrictor imperator, which imperator, imperator, however you want to say it, means commander, which I guess they're the most prevalent species in the reptile community, so um, I guess they are the commander-in-chief, but there are Central American boas, there's common boas, there's Colombian red tails, there's so many different types of common boas, including the Hog Island. They generally stay pretty small as well, they can get five to seven feet, and these are the boas that you'll find mostly with different types of morphs, like the Sun Glow, which is one of my favorites, uh, the IMG boa, which will show a lot of the iridescence, and more about iridescence later in the video as well. Most boas generally as babies tend to be a lot more nippier, but by taming them down and regularly handling them, you'll do just fine. I've seen boas that are more puppy dog than ball pythons. And because this is the most prevalent species in the reptile community, they can be pretty cheap as well. You can get a Central American boa for about a hundred bucks. Um, you can even find some regular common boas for 40 to 50 dollars. 
and they look amazing. I mean, the tails on them look absolutely beautiful. Number three on the list is the Solomon Island Ground Boa. Now there's also Solomon Island, Solomon, Solomon Island, There's also Sullivan Island tree boas, but I'm talking about the ground boas just because they tend to be a little bit easier to take care of. Uh, these ground boas get to about two to three feet on average. For the most part, they're pretty easy to handle. Same thing with the other boas, just tame them down, they'll be just fine. They kind of remind me of Dumeril's boas, but in a smaller package. They're also a pretty cheap species just because not a lot of people really like them. So it's it's not that there's so many of them, it's just that people don't really, are not really into Solomon Island ground boas. So if you see one, get one now because I'm sure just like the Dumeril's boa, they'll end up being like four or $500 within the next couple of years. Right now you can probably get one from anywhere from 70 to like about $150. Number two on the list is the Amazon tree boa. Now this is kind of a dream species for me because I've always loved arboreal setups, as you can tell. There's my other crested gecko right there. I've always loved arboreal setups. There's so much you can do with them, especially as a bioactive enclosure. And Amazon tree boas would be an amazing addition to an arboreal setup. Amazon tree boas can get to about five to six feet, but they are a slender bodied species. So they're not gonna get very tough to handle. They're probably gonna look a little too skinny for you, but just because they're slender body doesn't mean that they're too skinny. This is one of the more bitey species on this list. And I'm thinking that the only reason that they're more bitey is just because they're more of a vulnerable species. I mean, they are small and their tails, you have to be very careful with a lot of arboreal snakes just because they use their tails so much for climbing that if you damage them, it can be kind of detrimental to their health, but they are a great species nonetheless and the morphs are amazing. You can get reds, yellows, oranges, you can get all these different kinds of pattern morphs as well and I think they're just an amazing looking reptile. I say that about all reptiles, but I love reptiles so... <laughs> All reptiles to me look amazing. This is also a species that doesn't just eat rodents. They also, at least in the wild, can also feed on reptiles, bats, and even birds. So if you're kind of into like feeding Amazon tree boas different types of meals, you definitely can. But a lot of them in ca captivity, cactus. In captivity are just fed primarily a rodent diet. Number one on the list, and the reason it's number one is because it's my all-time favorite snake ever in the world, the Brazilian rainbow boa. Brazilian rainbow boas get to about four to six feet. They're mostly related to anacondas, or at least anacondas are mostly related to them. Brazilian rainbow boas are going to be more difficult to take care of. They're not a beginner species at all, but if you can get their humidity right and you can get their temperatures right, they will do amazing for you. Boas in general are just amazing eaters. They will get anything and everything that is in their way. So that's another reason why if you have a boa or if you're considering on buying one of these boas, you never want to handle it if you have any kind of rodent smell on you. If you just fed them, if you're going to feed them and you had the rodents in your hands. Adult Brazilian rainbow boas require large enclosures, 120 gallons or a 4x2x2 by two by two would be perfect for one. And my favorite thing about Brazilian rainbow boas, their iridescence. I mean, BCI boas have an iridescence as well. IMG boas have more of that iridescence in them. Brazilian rainbow boas are, I think, the most prevalent snakes that have that iridescence in them. What basically happens is kind of the same way as a water droplet um, becomes kind of like a kaleidoscope, which would show the rainbow. The scales, or I guess the skin on the boas, they produce more of an iridescence because of the refraction of the shape of their scales. I can get into it in another video, but Brazilian rainbow boas are just awesome. And if boas aren't really your style, then subscribe because next week I'll be going over the seven small species of pythons that you can own. Oh, and watch my other videos too. Bye.